All right, so we've talked about, um, let's review uh, real quick. So we've talked about um, what evolution, uh, some, some background information you need to know, what evolution, kind of an overview of that, um, about what speciation is and what natural selection is. Um, we talked about what evolution is not, what evolution is, kind of the main, um, the, the scientist that we talk about most often with evolution is Darwin, because his idea seemed to make sense uh, more than Lamarck's. Uh, we talked about an evidence for evolution, which would be the fossil record. And um, then we talked about why Darwin is so well known. Um, the finches differed from island to island and from the mainland of South America to the islands, mainly by the shape of their beaks. And that was dependent on what food that they ate. And so the story that I gave was completely fictional, something I just made up, but something that I wanted you to understand how something might happen. Um, you can think about the moths of Manchester. Um, how they adapted over time, how natural selection happened. It wasn't a human out there shooting birds that were, you know, that had um, one beak or another. It was nature saying, listen, and it, it kind of stinks for the bird. If you think about the birds that had really large beaks over on this island, they would have done so good on the, the island on the left, but they were on the island on the right and they died. Um, they died out. They were not able to reproduce as easily as the ones with skinny long beaks that could get into the cracks and crevices where the insects were. So um, nature, mother nature is oftentimes very, very harsh. And we see that with evolution. The idea of natural selection is the survival of the fittest. Um, and it can be very, very, very harsh. Uh, a really good example of that, a logical outworking are, um, if you think back to history, um, when you talk about, uh, in social studies, you may talk about um, World War II and the um, Nazi regime, their idea that the Aryan race was supreme and that th their their understanding of that came um, from a, a source of survival of the fittest. And in their mind, the Aryan race was the most supreme. And so in their mind, what they needed to happen for humans to evolve was to get rid of the weak. Um, so there are certain... Um, religious ideas or certain um, physical characteristics and there's even certain ideas um, that they saw as harmful um, and they worked and did what they could to um, get those things eradicated if you were any kind of, had any kind of disability um, then you also saw you know there was negative uh, a stigma a negative um, idea of you so you weren't seen as something that was beneficial um, a cool tv show that kind of talks through that uh, if you want to get your parents permission is um man in the high castle it goes through there's a um, some disabilities and some races that were seen as not as appealing and not as beneficial to the nazis um and you can see what kind of happened with that and it happened in real life with with things like the jewish holocaust so um, evolution has a lot of um, very interesting ideas, and there's also, just like with most things, there's also people that take it to an extreme. Um, and I, I think most, hopefully most of the people in our culture see that as not okay. Not okay to kill pe people that are dis disabled or of certain races. So um, let's go through talk about adaptation. So what are some examples of adaptations? And here's links, here's some links. Um, different things you can look at. Um, there's a YouTube video and a PowerPoint that will we'll go through this and hopefully we'll be able to do this in class later. But some examples of adaptations, you can see that in the moths of Manchester. You can see that in the finches that we've just talked about, Darwin's finches. Um, you can see that in some turtles. Um, and you can see that in these Asian bees, Asian bees compared to um, European bees. Very, very inter interesting. Uh, uh, a, uh, we're going to click on this. The murder squishing them to death. <laughs> murder squish. Um, you can uh, kind of look through this and we'll talk about this and the video that's also linked here goes through and um, it's a little video from a documentary that also explains that. So um, an adaptation is an, a characteristic that helps an organism survive and because it can survive it has a higher chance of reproducing. So those characteristics can be um, colors of feathers, it can be size, it can be its courage or lack of courage, um, whatever an adaptation is something, it could be camouflage, a lot of times it's camouflage or mimicry. We'll talk about that. Um, but an adaptation is that characteristic that helps an organism survive. Um, so some other examples of adaptations, a, a possum playing dead. Now, if you play dead when a wolf was attacking you, you probably would just be dinner to the wolf. But a possum playing dead and giving off maybe foul odors or something like that makes the organism that's uh, 
that was going to eat it just kind of confuses them or makes them think that there may be some, you know, some negative effects to the predator's uh, digestive system or whatever. Um, you have a sloth. A sloth is extremely slow, which we would say that sloth is not fit at all. But this sloth is, has a very low metabolism, so it doesn't need as many calories. You and I need around 2,000 kilocalories each day, 2,000 calories a day. A sloth needs way more than that. So it can deal with, um, now I would still say I would not want to be a sloth that slow because you can't run away from jaguars and stuff like that. They're going to eat you. But as far as starvation killing you, it's very, very low. You're not going to have a lot of, uh, as much starvation as if you needed a ton of food and couldn't find it. Um, cold stratification, these are all not things you need to know all of them. You might want to jot down one of the two of these or three or four of them that make sense to you. But a uh, cold stratification means that some seeds need to be uh, cold or chilled to start growing. So things like apple seeds, if you take an apple seed off of a tree or an apple off of a tree, take the apple seeds out of it and plant them, the apple will not grow that year. You need to put it in something like a refrigerator, keep it moist, like it would be in the ground, a little bit moist, put it in a refrigerator for two, three, four, five months, like it would have in the winter in Russia or, um, or the Siberian, um, that area, uh, which is where apples are from. So it needs to go through a, what it thinks is a really, really cold winter. So refrigerate it, not freeze it, but refrigerate it, and then plant it and it should grow. So that's cold stratification. A lot of seeds do that. Things like uh, peaches and, and plums, things that have stone fruits in them, they need that. Fainting goats, you can click on this video. Um, very funny. These these goats faint. To be honest with you, I don't know a really a whole lot about why that goat that why that would be an advantage, aside from the fact that humans think it's cool. And if humans think something is really really cool, they have a higher chance of of uh, breeding it and taking care of it better. So those fainting goats probably in nature would have died out because when a predator goes to run after it, it just dies. But because they are really cool and that that gene popped up, I think some dude. Um, I think it was a, a breeder or something found it and he found if he opened an umbrella really, really fast in here, they would fall over if they're running. So they don't actually faint, but their law, their legs lock up and they can't run anymore. Uh, European and Asian honeybee. That's the murder squishing that I talked about earlier. Uh, cheetah, uh, it's speed and distracting camouflage. If a whale has a nostril on the top of its back, so it doesn't have to exit the water completely. Um, a king snake mimics a coral snake. If you look up a king snake and a coral snake, you'll see that they look very, very similar. And unless you memorize the little phrase, it says uh, red on black, friend of Jack, red on yellow, kill a fellow. Uh, so that's called mimicry. And here's another example of mimicry is a monarch and viceroy butterfly. One of these is poisonous and one of them is just pretending to be the other. Um, and I don't remember which one they are, but they look, if I saw these two, I would not know the difference. And there are differences, but I would just not notice the difference. Same thing as the king snake and the coral snake, unless I learned something about it, they would, I would assume that's the same species. But one of them is very poisonous to eat for like birds and stuff, and one of them is not. And the one that's not could get eaten by birds, but it doesn't because the birds can't tell the difference. Um, so that's called mimicry. You're mimicking or mocking something else. Um, so that's about it. That's it for evolution. Uh, go back and listen to the other videos. Listen to it again if you need to. Um, you should have notes on all of this. Um, if you want to, when you're finished taking notes and you have everything that you think that you need, um, you're welcome to link to this, um, you know, to, to please write in your own words. But once you have all of that, you can start going back and looking through these videos. I'd like to look at these um, with you um, or at least talk to you about it. If you uh, if you watch one, maybe write down, like if you watch this video, write, write down why might that be an advantage or what some of the words, how does this have anything to do with evolution? So, that's it.